Castlevania, written by Warren Ellis and distributed by Netflix, is an adaptation of the classic Castlevania series, specifically Dracula's Curse on the NES. Now, I quite like Castlevania as a franchise, especially the original 8 and 16-bit titles, but given the long history of video games adapted into film, I was not really excited to watch this series. I was trying to decide whether to go to the dentist's office to have my gums removed or watch Castlevania, and chose the latter, which is a decision I do not regret, though my teeth are now redder than the bishop's garments at the start of the first episode. What I quite liked about this series is that it was a proper adaptation. You know, the kind of thing that takes elements from the original and builds upon them, instead of blatantly copy-pasting the thing into a new medium. I don't mean to rag on straight adaptations, hell I liked Brotherhood more than 2003, but when the plot of the game is jumping Whitman kills monsters, I was pleased to see some actual world building beyond what is a man. Castlevania follows the events in the historical region of Wallachia after Dracula's wife is burned at the stake and he releases the monsters of hell to kill everyone in vengeance. Trevor Belmont, the last of a clan of monster hunters who seemingly exists only to be drunk, winds up helping ordinary people and killing the hordes through gratuitous violence. The show does not end with a fight against Dracula. I assume that's at the end of the announced season 2, though it does convince you that the church is the true enemy of both the protagonist and the antagonist. Because their representatives get killed off in such a brutal fashion that one has to wonder if the writer was a reluctant altar boy and is using this as some kind of revenge therapy. I guess I should commend the show for that. Honestly, it's rare to have a show like this make their primary villain sympathetic before they even show the protagonist. Maybe I'm just a sucker for love-fueled revenge, but in a TV world where the average bad guy is just a hammier version of a Sean Connery Bond villain, it was nice to actually appreciate appreciate the motivation. And you kind of have to feel for the guy. I know Europeans during the Dark Ages weren't the sharpest tools in the shed, and I guess if there was a castle that could teleport around, I would also be under the impression it was satanic, but Dracula loses his wife basically because education in Wallachia is about on the same level as it is on Planet Hulk. The major fault I have with the series is that the pacing is about as solid as wet tissue paper, which might be due to the nature of four episodes, but is odd since the first episode is slow and the remainder felt rushed. Especially the finale, which goes from story beat to story beat at a breakneck pace in order to introduce a character in the most predictable way possible that I was literally quoting the dialogue as it happened. The writing, for the most part, is passable. There were only a few moments where it becomes cliche and boring, but what really brought the level down for me was the number of times we were told something that could have been shown or understood through context. The scene in the bar is the worst about this, to the point I was rolling my eyes as though I was Mr. Timbles who got stuck in a rinse cycle. I don't mean to rip on the show too hard. The action scenes were great, the animation was crisp, and the voice actors were quite good. Trevor's in particular does a great job of voicing the aloof, unfairly persecuted badass. Though at times all of the actors put the script on their back like a parent carrying an unrepentant child when they just don't want to go to school. The world building was convincing too. Why wouldn't an immortal being have technology far in advance of anything that the rest of the world had? And the sense of pride that both Trevor and the speakers have in their respective ideologies and the conflict that arises from that, while solved quickly, does feel organic. I especially loved the opening prologue. The little interactions between Lisa and Dracula made Dracula in particular a compelling character, far, far more interesting than any of the actual villains that get fought in the series. Though honestly that's a little bit of a negative too, since Lisa is only around for the first five minutes or so, and after the first episode Dracula doesn't appear at all. It's like the writers were like, here are two great characters, now say goodbye to them and enjoy this stand-in character instead. The main question I had when considering this review was, would people who have never played or heard of Castlevania before enjoy this show? And the honest answer to that is, I don't see why not, but why would you watch it if you don't know Castlevania at all? I almost certainly would not have tuned in if I didn't have a positive opinion of the franchise. Which in a way is the rub. You could actually be surprised by the character reveals if you didn't know what happened in the game, but they're basically just a checklist for the players. It's as though you sent someone to the store to pick up groceries and you're unpacking the bags. Eggs, check. Milk, check. Sypha, check. I give the show a rating of play. It's worth the hour and a half, even if the script is painful at times, to watch some slick animated fight scenes and overall interesting character designs. Though if you're the religious type who can't take a joke about your faith, I would strongly advise you to stay away. While the show does confirm the existence of God through a throwaway line about how holy water is metaphysically different than regular water, it also means that God has his Old Testament robes on as his worshippers got slaughtered. You should just wait for a more church-friendly video game, like Super Noah's Ark 3D to get adapted next.